Hello everyone, can I especially appreciate some of you that have already hit the ground running, engaging with the module, attending some of your live sessions and sending me questions and sending me uh, feedback related to the prerequisite lectures and some of you have said that you absolutely uh, find it extremely useful in preparing you for this particular module. So I want to, I want to appreciate you for for getting back to me and say that you you really find this useful so thank you for doing so in previous uh lectures we've, we've looked at issues relating to planning and goal setting and in today's uh sections we're looking at something completely different we're looking at organization in crisis we're looking at organization in crisis every organization small big uh medium organizations we experience one form of crisis or the other and if there's anything we've seen from the ongoing pandemic uh, with coronavirus, we've seen that no organization is completely immune from crisis. I'll repeat that again. No organization is exempted from crisis. Um, the, the, the idea that we are too big to fail, um, that idea is not fashionable anymore. So every organization, that's, that's why managers need um, to think about uh, the issues relating to crisis. But before you think about how do you manage crisis within an organization, so the question then again is, what is crisis? How, what is crisis? What is crisis management? So how can we help our organization to navigate to to manage uh, the crisis in which the organizations may be facing? So in the, in these lectures, so I'll be looking at uh, issues of organizations in crisis. So my name is Steve Olaso Imaf Mishabi, and I'm still here to support you all the way. And perhaps you have any questions I've told you again and again, drop a comment or drop, drop, drop on the email or get in touch with your mother, um, lecturers and, and they are, we are all here to support you all the way. So let's proceed with this, with, with the, with the lectures. So when you hear the word crisis and crisis management, when you hear the word crisis and crisis management, so what are the things that truly come to your mind? So there are a wide range of things, there are a wide range of definitions of what crisis is. We're going to be looking at those, we're going to be dissecting those and, and look at all these issues. And when it, when it comes to the issue of organizations in crisis, organizations in crisis. So as a manager, as a future manager, leaders, business executive, mm, how do we deal with this? Okay, let's, let's just continue with, without much ado with this particular topical issue. So in, 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 the, in my, my presentation today is get you to understand the, the different stages organizations can confront in terms of uh, stages of decline that organizations may experience, what crisis is and, and appreciate the natures and how that conceptualization of crisis can help org managers within organizations to navigate through crisis. So, Normally, every organization we've seen, what a time to be taking um, crisis management uh, related uh, topic. Every organization during this period of pandemic uh, in one, are experiencing one form of uh, crisis to a larger extent or to a smaller extent, depends on the size of the organization, depends on the resources they have. But our learning outcome today will focus on the uh, Greenhouse uh, model of organizational growth, right? As organizations start to grow, you understand what happens to them. Uh, we'll also look, look at the Wilson and John, Johnson uh, models of organizational decline. We will then look at crisis chronology. We will look at the definition of a crisis, and we will try to appreciate the, the different stages um, within the Wilson and Johnson model. So this will help us to put put some bit of uh context to what we we are we are learning today bear in mind that i'm, I'm very aware that this is not a module in in crisis um, a core crisis management uh, module this is an organizational module but i'm just for every managers you one of the skills that is required in today's world is ability to navigate and, and manage crisis uh for your organization so crisis management is going to be essential it's going to be fundamental in that regard so let's continue with the lectures and see what we what we've got so the purpose of understanding a crisis process. So what is the essence of understanding a crisis process? And my, my gut feeling is that it is very likely that as a manager, you will experience, you will have to experience, you will have to handle one issues within the organizations, 
one problem within the organization. As a manager, we have to deal with a problem. You have to deal with uh, maybe any issues, conflict within the organizations. You may need to manage crisis within the organization. And that's right. That's right. And what often happens is that the gap between uh, a problem and a crisis sometimes it is determined by the perceived magnitude of the of the effect of the situation that you're looking at. And what that means is that a crisis will require uh, managers, will require you to have an appropriate amount of resources that is commensurate um, with the potential or forecasted effect in order to prevent or limit or damage the impact or the disruption on your operational activities as, as an organization. And what is what, what within the literatures around crisis management, one of the one of the key silent uh, uh, debates or silent features or silent comments is that a crisis that is uh, ignored or an issue that is ignored, rather an issue that is ignored uh, is a crisis ensured. So what that means is that it suggests that crisis actually uh, is not something that happens overnight. It's not something that happens all of a sudden. It's something that, that builds up over time that because maybe po probably because there are some uh, points at some early warning signs that managers need to be very aware of maybe through proper crisis identification process, deploying the tools of crisis communication process, crisis uh, identification process so such as uh, maybe may, maybe scenario planning, testing, for example, planning, for example, um, fault tree analysis. This can this can this this can help ma uh, managers to 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 forecast to to see identify areas in which the organizations may be exposed to potential uh, crisis or problems within the organization. That being said, uh, so let's let's look at. Uh, we've we've seen here uh, the purpose of understanding the crisis process because if you don't understand the crisis process, chances are that as a manager you may not likely provide the appropriate response uh, to be able to deal with the crisis. So that's why it is absolutely necessary to understand the process in which crisis actually emerge, in which crisis actually come about. And of course, there are different categories, there are different classifications of crisis, and a crisis for one organization may not necessarily be a crisis for another organization. So every manager have a responsibility to define what would be um, a crisis for their organization. And that is why in the course of the lectures, we'll also be looking at issues of uh, definition of what a crisis actually mean. So charting the crisis process. So our learning outcome, as I've uh, stated, is to be able to identify some of the key uh, characteristics of the crisis process itself. And then, of course, I, I will try to explain to you the uh, definition of each stage of the crisis process. I will try to explain to you the transition between the stages of the crisis process. And I will try to look at some of the triggers and we will look at the implication of the cost that is involved in this in this whole process. And of course, if there's any practical implications of what I'm di discussing today is the uh, ongoing pandemic, coronavirus pandemic that is having a massive uh, cost implication for different organization. So that is absolutely important. That being said, one what, within the literature, so uh, a, a very useful way to look at uh, organizational growth is to uh, look at the Greenwich models of organizational growth. So earlier in, in, in the beginning of the lectures, I, I made reference to part of our learning outcome to look at this particular model and see the different uh, uh, growth stages in which organizations actually experience. And Green has actually proposed this particular model uh, fra well, framework uh, to look at uh, five uh, different uh, growth stages. And and what they what 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 it says is that each of these stages uh, results in a crisis if it is not properly dealt with. And advancement to the next stage require in a way successful uh, resolving the crisis in the previous stage. And I'll, I'll, I'll and I will explain to you what, what what it means. So this particular frame will help managers within the organization to truly appreciate how to deal with um, organization as the organization start to grow. As the organization grow, organizations will be at different stage uh, in their life cycle. So managers have responsibility to know at what stage is these organizations 
and deploy appropriate tools to be able to manage the organizations in that particular process. So within the framework of Greenhouse of, uh, Green uh, framework of organizational growth, the first stage is the uh, stage that is called growth through creativity. Uh, this stage is where, for example, an entrepreneur develops these keys to create and introduce a new product to the market. Uh, the organizational uh, learnings, organizational learning start to occur at this, at this particular stage. So that when that happens, you have where organizational learning start to occur at this particular stage. And you have, you may have issues of a crisis of leadership where the entrepreneurs or, or, or the founders may lack management, relevant management skills to be able to manage, uh, the, 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 the growth that is happening at this particular stage one. And what it means is that if this is not appropriately dealt with, it can proceed to the next stage. Remember, stage one, growth through creativity. So if it, if it is not properly handled or managed, this crisis of leadership that, that has emerged can, can lead to a spiral effect in the next stage. And what that is, that is growth through direction. So in this stage, you're looking at the issue of crisis of leadership that has resulted in recruitment of top uh, level managers uh, that needs to take responsibility for the organizational strategy. Remember, organizations have maybe perhaps introduced a uh, new product to the market. So they, they need something to, uh, they need leadership. They need top managers. They need senior, senior managers. And because that wasn't properly dealt with at the first stage. So you're looking at crisis of leadership, uh, where you're looking at uh, re recruitment of top managers of top uh, executive that needs to have responsibility to uh, ensure set strategies for the organization. So most organizations um, turns around um, maybe by their senior executive. But of course, once uh, one, one of the things that usually happen is when you bring in top executive, you you have to raise the, the issues that bothers around um issues of autonomy do you want to how do you with span of control how do you want to uh maintain uh the, your autonomy within within the organization itself so creative people uh who were the initial founders of the business or the entrepreneurs may lose uh control over the new products that have been developed in the markets or the, because so they're bringing new executive now and they need to let go certain certain decision making process so professional managers uh, will be we 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 run the show at this at this stage. So that, that is where the issue of crisis of autonomy comes in here, right? Because it created a, a dilemma be, between uh, the founder, the entrepreneurs, and then of course the new managers that have been recruited into the organization. So there may be there may be crisis of autonomy if it's not properly dealt with there. And of course, we can then look at if this is not happening, if this doesn't uh, properly depth with at this particular stage, what happened? Let's look at it in, in stage three. Growth through delegation. Now you're looking at to resolve the crisis of uh, uh, autonomy. So what managers do, they must delegate, right? Uh, they need to strike a balance uh, between the the need for professional management and the opportunity for entrepreneurship within the organization, opportunity for creativities within the organization. So that needs to be very clear within that organization. So there is the movement towards what, what is called more like a, a product uh, team structures where you we need to fi figure out um, what exactly uh, you want to delegate and to whom uh, you should delegate. And then of course, the crisis of control can then come in as power struggles over resources emerge within the organization between the very top leaders or top executive and lower level managers. And that's, and, and this continue, this cycle kind of continue to the next stage because it is not properly dealt with. And that is, uh, the growth through coordinations in the greatness framework of organizational growth. And what this means is that this particular one you're looking at to resolve the crisis of control, you managers need to find the right balance of do you want to centralize or decentralize control within the organizations, right? Again, I will encourage you to read the book of uh, uh, Richard Duft and uh, Alan Bernstein on management. If you haven't read that, 
um, to read around around planning and control and co coordinations as part of the management function. Now we are looking at uh, top manage management top echelon within the organizations. We need to take on roles of coordinating different uh, divisions within the within the business and I attempt to try to uh, inculcate a company wide uh, view. Will, will then start to emerge within this organization. And this is where you see crisis of red tape. Crisis of red tape. So increasing reliance on rules and standards and, and organizations will, will not try to uh, put in more rules and standard and procedures, standard procedures in place. And then organization becomes um, completely overtly uh, bureaucratic in nature. And this is where it can get very complicated if uh, managers within the organizations are not able to deal with what is unfolding right before them. And that leads to the uh, fifth stage. And what is happening in the fifth stage is the growth through collaboration. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Growth through collaboration. So emphasis here is... Um, this emphasizes more like greater spontaneity in management actions. You're looking at greater use of products, uh, teams, metric structures. I discussed metric structures in the first uh, lecture when I talked about introduction to organizational management. So I would encourage you to, to look at that um, in, the, in the first lectures. So of course, you're looking at changing from mechanistic to organic structures as an organization growth uh, is a difficult uh, uh, tax to to achieve. So this is what the greenhouse uh, uh, models of organization uh, growth is trying to trying to explain to. Now I just put up this diagram on uh, just to just to clarify, uh, explain, summarize what what I'm what I'm saying so far. So you have assuming this is um, an organization that I just started. Uh, on the screen that oh, yeah, this is a young organization started. This is the age of the organization there on your screen. And of course, you have the size of the organizations, right? From small to large, from young to old, right? From young to old, you have that. Now, what, what will happen is that at the very start of the organization, when the organization actually started, um, it moves to growth where creativity uh, emerge, introduce new products and services and new uh, stuff to the market, basically. But when the business starts to expand, uh, they will need senior managers to help them uh, maybe they have appropriate strategies and visions and other things in place. Uh, dynamic capabilities of the business needs to be reevaluated and re-examined at that time, deploy appropriate resources, unique resources within the organization itself. That needs to happen. And so that is what may lead to, because of the lack of uh, maybe the top talent that may be required, that can lead to a crisis of leadership at this stage one. And if that is not properly dealt with, that is where you're having the issue of growth through directions. And, and of course, at the directions where you bring, bring in um, top managers, top executive within the organization itself, what happens is that you that raises questions around autonomy of the business so do you how much do you how much control do you want to have uh and that can that is what we're looking at at the crisis of autonomy here and of course when that is not properly dealt with again uh you could be looking at uh brought through delegation because organizations may not start to um look at do how much do we delegate and to whom and therefore it raises issues around cost crisis of control Right. So when that is not appropriately uh, handled, if it's not appropriately handled, you're looking at other aspects where you're looking at growth through coordination. So how do we coordinate our employees to achieve the best possible things that we want them to achieve? And of course, if it's, that can start to create the crisis of uh, red tape, because that could be a sign of things to come. And at that stage, um, what this framework suggests is that you start to look at issues around collaborations and then and that can lead create another bigger issues or crisis for the business. So let's look at the next slide. So 
when that happened, we're looking at when crisis emerged, so that raises questions around organization decline. And this is this is this poses greater risks for the organizations. That's the risk of not changing. You need to change, change. <laughs> right, managers need to be able to appreciate that. So you're looking at the there are five five stages of decline here. I'm going to explain that. So you can have blind stage to understand that actually something is going on in your wider business within the wider business environment. Something is going on. Blinded stage. And then of course in action stage, 40 action stage and crisis stage, dissolution stage. Uh, decline can be actually reversed by taking prompt and corrective action. So organizational decline can and needs to be managed. Organization decline, organization crisis can and needs to be managed. It should be managed. And that is why the Witzer and Johnson models of organizational decline uh, comes in. So this is just a, a, a Pictoria um, illustration of what the framework is about. Looking at the Witzer and Johnson framework of organizational decline. There are five stages here in this one. So this is completely different from the Greenhouse uh, framework of organizational growth. Here in the Witzer and Johnson uh, more there or frameworks of organizational decline. There are also five stages here, but we're looking at organizational decline, not organizational growth. So within this, you have blindness stage. I've talked about, I've mentioned that earlier. You have or uh, inaction stage, 40 action stage, a crisis stage, and also dissolution stage. So this is what the, uh, so the stage one, good information here uh, can help. Uh, you can in action stage, if you take a prompt action, you can actually deal with the problem. Uh, the 40 action, if you take a corrective action, you can deal with the issues uh, quite early. If crisis do happen, that means you need effective reorganizations. And of course, uh, at the solution stage, that may be too late. We saw that in the case studies that we, we look at um, in week one, where we look at uh, the case of Carillion and what happens with that particular organization, the crisis that they experience. So that leads to eventual dissolutions of that particular company because the at the crisis stage, effective reorganization wasn't done, and and that that is what uh, these particular stages um, of decline uh, proposed by Wilson and Johnson is trying to get us to understand. But I'm going to explain what each of each of these stage actually uh, is in practice and their implications for for crisis management and organization manager. So like I said, so five stages, stage one, blinded stage. So we're looking at blinded stage as um, where organizations are unable to recognize actually uh, the internal and external problems within the organization that can threaten their long-term survival. And I mentioned that uh, because we see uh, many organizations that do not have any appropriate plans in place uh, to deal with uh, maybe effective, e eventual crisis that may unfold, that may affect them. And sometimes something is happening within the wider business or, or environment Managers need to sense what is going on. Managers need to look at their industry. They need to scan their industry, understand the, the dynamic uh, natures of the industries and see area where their businesses could or sh may be affected by potential external forces that could have an impact or that, that could threaten their long-term survival. So this is the blinded stage where organizations are unable to recognize the internal or external problems that can threaten their long-term survival. And that obviously can, uh, in stage two, you're, you're looking at area where if this is not handled correctly, uh, you're looking at a station where inaction uh, becomes the, the, the order of the day, where despite the clear signal of the deteriorating performance, top management uh, take lead to uh, corrective actions to deal with the problems. So there is now a gap between the acceptable performance of the organization and also the actual performance of the organization itself. And, and, and this can eventually lead to dissolution of the company as we will see uh, in the explanation. So managers need to be very proactive at this particular stage and being able to stand up and take corrective action. So in stage three, we're looking at 40 actions. So managers may even take actions, but if you take a 40 actions, what's the point? 
Anyway, so they have made the wrong decisions because of conflict in top management team, or they may even have changed too little too late, uh, very more uh, at this stage, doing more harm than good from reorganizations, and that can cause a crisis uh, for the for the organization. Uh, by this time, uh, the, 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 you only need radical changes within within the organization. But you have to be, you need radical strategies and and structures that can stop the decline. So we saw with the case study of Carillo that we looked at in the, in the, in the multi um, earlier on in week one, we saw that the organizations enter new markets uh, in Middle East and and in Canada, and they start to lose money. And of course, they have excessive spiral uh, debt as well. So these these are really um, stuff that can lead to to crisis, create crisis, bigger problem for organizations, and and of course leads to the larger um, the last stage which this with the dissolution aspect and in the dissolution so this is where decline at this stage decline is almost like uh irreversible where the organization cannot recover at this stage because the organization have to go into administrations where they have to try to settle all their debtors and creditors and things like that and uh, come back at this stage is like uh too late um but we're effective and that's why crisis management uh this thing is absolutely important that's why crisis management can help managers to put in appropriate measures in place to prevent crisis from happening and if you can prevent it at least to minimize the impact of the crisis on the business continuity or the business survival of the organization itself so these are these are really important stuff that i just want to mention uh, at this stage now what usually happen with every crisis is that we, we remember we're looking at organizations in crisis so with every crisis you have a pre-crisis stage so there, this will be a stage where the organization hasn't experienced a crisis uh normally and then it leads to a point where the organization experiences a crisis and of course at this stage managers are thinking about recovery how do we recover to get back to our pre-crisis stage so this is more like a a three-phase um framework if you like to conceptualize the natures of crisis within organizations in which organizations may be and what that when that happens is that at, at each stage or at each state in which organizations are say for example if an organization has an experience a crisis at the pre-crisis stage investment in crisis management is crucial investment in risk identification is crucial investment in training is crucial uh and also looking at the issue of risk culture within the organization and issues of risk governance uh robust risk governance within the organization needs to happen scenario um planning and testing these are really crucial at the pre-crisis stage these are crisis communication uh risk communications within the organizations all these tools needs to be deployed risks identification to identify potential risks in which the organizations may be exposed to these are really important at this pre-crisis stage because no successful crisis management starts uh when the crisis starts so it starts before the crisis start pre-crisis and when a crisis happen the organization managers can deploy the tools uh that are at the pre-crisis stage to deal with the crisis to to get the organization to recover or at least to minimize the impact to reduce the impact or say for example you're looking at maybe an organization that is into manufacturing they could have uh, diversified their suppliers um, to make sure that their suppliers is not overly concentrated in one particular region such that if that region is affected by a major maybe um natural disaster for example that will affect the suppliers of uh, raw materials to, to this particular manufacturing plant that is going to affect that that manufacturing plant if their suppliers are or of raw materials are concentrated in one particular location so pre-crisis um, uh, strategies will have include diversification of suppliers such that they are not uh, they are not clustered in one particular location so that, that that's why pre-crisis management effort pre-crisis management tools and strategies are absolutely important by organization managers to, to be able to deal with now if you if I, if you permit me to go to the next service and the question then is maybe what is a crisis what what how do we know that we are in crisis
So we've looked at uh, pre-crisis, we look at that's the chronology of crisis. We look at pre-crisis, we look at crisis and recover, right? So you try to get the organization back to normal. And that's what is happening currently with, with COVID is where many organizations uh, are trying to get back to the positions where they are before the pandemic. Now that 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 is a big that's a big um that's a big project to 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 deal with to handle for for many managers. So pre crisis could trigger crisis, but the definition of crisis is required. If crisis is properly handled, that could lead to success. If it's not, it could lead to failure of the organization. Is so how the organization flourish or prosper in case of success, or they can dissolve in case of if, in case they fail. But you need to be able to separate problems and issues and crisis from these are completely different stuff that many managers need to be aware of. Normally, within the literatures, the way I like to see crisis is um, is a threat that can uh, mostly increase the risk of the failure of the business if if the business is if, if the if the crisis is not properly dealt with. So crisis is like fire that you need to starve it of oxygen. So you need to starve it. So a crisis is um, you're looking at something that can threaten the business survival the, and increases the risk of failures of the business. It can jeopardize and disrupt the normal operations of the business. And you're looking at that there could be temporary dimensions to it uh, because there is the aspect where you're looking at decision making needs to be uh, it needs to be rapid. It needs to be urgent. Right. Um, and it need, sometimes needs to be made within a very short period of time. Um, that, and that is why this is really important in, in the sense that managers need to be able to recognize indeed when are we in crisis and that's why the definition of crisis is important. So I've already explained the, the Wilson and Johnson model uh, declines of organization framework. So within that framework stage one, for example, stage one to three would be like maybe to this point would be like pre-crisis stage. Uh, and then of course, at this stage forward to this stage, you're looking at uh, the crisis phase and of course if you're trying to reverse that that will be recovery trying to get the business back to normal that's that's what that's what that's the explanation that that this particular the uh, diagram is trying to show you on the screen there so but the question then is that uh, what is a crisis what is a crisis I've tried to explain that in the in, in my previous uh, in the previous uh, slide that Mostly a crisis is a turning point, right? It's a turning point in the life of an organization where there is urgent need to change. There is urgent need to change where you're looking at, uh, you need to take the correct change to, that can lead to the survival of the organization. Because if you take an incorrect or you do nothing, that can eventually result to the death of the organization or the organization can actually dissolve. That's what I mean by that. And the other thing though is that it is very perceptual. It depends on uh, one person crisis might be a main problem to another. So that's that's the thing that I mentioned that it, the issue of problems and issues and crisis within the organization needs to be separated. So managers, so it's your responsibility as a manager for your organization to define what crisis mean for your company. But what I'm trying to get you to do now is to know that when you see an event that has the potential to actually affect the business survival of your organization, that could be a crisis that could be an indicator that indeed that company is in crisis and every crisis um, has the element of surprise unexpected and uh, some 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 we, we've seen that sometimes it's in a way that is unplanned uh, situation or, or events that has not been uh, completely foreseen or anticipated but of course with benefit of hindsight you could uh, want to argue that there are some point out to, to it but it could cause um, major deviation from expected uh, uh, parts or, 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 or the target of the organizations or equilibrium. And usually you have a situations where organizations need to take a very decisive actions in, in that particular uh, situation. So this could give you a clue of what crisis means for the organizations at, at that particular time, but you have a responsibility to set the tone for, for, for your organization. So that within literature, there are different definitions of, of crisis. Uh, Barton, for, for example, in 28, uh, looking at crisis as any event that can actually maybe seriously harm the people or reputations or financial coordination of an organization. And other studies look at uh, as something that is unpredictable, uh, something that is that 
carries expectations of serious impact, negative outcome, and perception. And what, what I like to say is that most crises are usually characterized by ambiguity, confusions, and feelings of disorientation. So we've seen that again and again with COVID, and we've also seen that a crisis sometimes interrupts normal business uh, transactions and can threaten the very existence of the organization itself. So it's something that needs to be taken seriously. So managers, you have responsibility to, to ensure that your organization survives. So how you, how, what strategies are you going to put in place to help your business survive? I've mentioned some, some, some in, in, in the previous, uh, in my previous, uh, slide. I uh, mentioned issues relating to risk identification, scenario planning, investment and training. I've mentioned other, other areas that managers need to pay attention to as well, like maybe carrying out a doomsday scenario analysis, for example, that could give you an uptake in which um, you can understand what, what are the things that you need to do to prevent or to manage the crisis to which your organization will eventually uh, uh, deal with. So that that's 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 in that in in that context. So, but there there are components of of crisis. I've mentioned some of them already. The issue of unexpected, the fact that sometimes crisis cannot be anticipated, uh, and the fact that uh, it may exceed as aggressive uh, your uh, your crisis management plan, which is the CMP crisis management plan. Uh, and crisis can plan in terms of the fact that crisis is not routine. It's different from an emergency situation that is very well structured and well rapid. And sometimes crisis produce this uncertainty that's part of the component, part of the element. That's, and this can give you an indication if your organization is in crisis or not. It's going to have a crisis or not. If you find yourself in a situation that is likely to produce uncertainty, that happens likely to that is not routine that is likely to be unexpected um and as well it may even create opportunities anyway to grow and it may sometimes even increase efficiency and profitability because we've seen with COVID 19 where some organizations are profiting from from the crisis whereas others are not so it depends on what companies can see what their managers can see what their leaders can see so it may also one of the other area is the threat to uh, what is called um, reputations or image of the organization itself. So that is absolutely also an important aspect it's, that can ultimately destroy the organization if it's not properly managed. So these give you an insight in, in terms of some of the component of what crisis uh, could entail. Again, with every crisis I mentioned, I mentioned early warning signs because the literature's uh, mattress in 2001, back in 2001, actually mentioned the fact that, and this has been uh, proving consistently across across the literatures, uh, actively research around crisis management, that well in advance of, of the occurrence, uh, re referring to crisis now, all crises actually send out early warning signs. If these signals can be picked up and acted upon prior to the occurrence of the crisis, then the crisis can be prevented before it occurs. Um, which is the best form of uh, crisis management? Crisis prevention is the best form of crisis management. But of course, there are some crises that are completely, you cannot prevent them, but you can mitigate their impact on the organizations. And it's incumbent upon managers to put up that plan in place to help their companies to ensure that the, you mitigate the impact of crisis on the organization itself. So that being said, I'm just going to go into the other part in terms of early warning and the value it brings to our organization. So within the uh, within this particular within a Johnson framework, for example, early warning stage will have been stage one to three, where you're looking at the blended inaction and 40 action. This will have been early warning um, area uh, at within within the particular um, framework. Now the cost of crisis could be very and numerous could be very costly um, in terms of resources, in terms of time, lost business and reputation, profit and sales, share values, and quite a number of things. A number of different aspects of the organization can be affected, and employees could be laid off. And this has an, an incremental effect on on families, on society, and on government um, revenues, and wide range of things. Um, very very complex uh, 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 situation. So. The costs are really, really challenging for most organizations. So with any warning, so you have a situations where you're saying 
how you're looking at issues of sales could be affected time could be lost and that can obviously this is like the stage four of the Winston and Johnson framework the crisis stage and that can have a major traumatic impact on the organization itself and this is this is where it really gets uh, uh, important that managers take issue of crisis for crisis uh, uh, stage very seriously to be able to deal with any sort of potential crisis on the organization itself so this is really important it's really uh, looking at that if you don't manage it it can start to rise up right uh the the cost can rise up over time i think that's what i'm trying to demonstrate here the, this is the as i mean this is the cost of a crisis so this is the cost of the crisis over time if it's not properly handled it can rise up uh, sharply so that's what this particular is trying to do. but if you manage it it can reduce and and you can bring it to the to the barest minimal so, so instead of it to rise you can try to flatten the curve you hear the word um quite frank frequently within these current situations we're dealing with pandemic many organizations are trying to recover so you're trying to flatten the curve they, 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 they use the word flatten the curve so what happened is you need monitoring scanning surveillance issues are trying to scrutinize your performance as a manager so you look at regular monthly meetings regular report generations and try to put up some structures in place to make sure that you can detect any major risks that can have a traumatic impact on the organizations and then of course i mentioned risk identifications of course i've mentioned that as well so it reduces that element of surprise in a sense where you are properly able to identify a risk remember a risk that has not been identified cannot be managed and that's 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 true for risk management and that's also uh true for crisis management so regular meetings and regular routine surveillance uh, so and, and of course i've mentioned the the, the major area is likely to be hit um when a crisis happens financial resources of the companies can be affected and of course sales and uh, human resources could also be affected so let's look at in the next slide what what comes up next so finally so let's look at uh, crisis prepared organizations um the latest point to the fact that uh, crisis prepared organizations share about um some similarities some attributes uh, if you like and one of it is the fact that some of them are and these are not in particular order some of them are positive and very uh, forward uh looking leadership uh they have that they have that positive and forward looking leadership and of course another idea is, is the fact that i mentioned area of risk identification so risks are, are known and addressed and are where 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 in advance and then they put up some mitigation measures in place some appropriate plans are there so they have shared visions and purpose as well so and of course uh you have issues around uh crisis cover and control structures is appropriately understood roles and responsibility risk ownership here uh you're looking at all the things that major risk responsibility within the companies are, are very clear who is doing what who is doing who so these are some of the attributes these are some of the characteristics of uh, crisis uh, prepared organizations they, they share this particular attribute and they have the right mix of skills and capabilities and they have like crisis two uh kits uh, ready to go um by crisis two kits so imagine companies that have done they have effective plans in place in fact they have done effective uh, maybe scenarios analysis have effective uh, four three analysis to know what could go wrong and what they could do if things go wrong uh, these companies will be crisis ready uh, and they will be much more better um, able to handle crisis compared to organizations that haven't thought about that and of course leaders and, and crisis responders are uh, back to test it I talked about uh, doomsday scenario analysis for example what the worst case that could happen and these organizations tend to um, survive crisis much more better than organizations that doesn't really have this type of type of uh, attribute in in place and this is what you should watch it for if you're managers for an organizations so what what are some of the attributes of your organization that that suggests that you crisis ready so you need to you need to be able to reflect on that and see the areas that you need to improve or you, you can improve and that's why 
I, I, I just want to encourage you to try to look at maybe Rick widely and see what, what you can add to this list. So I've come to the end of the uh, lectures. So some of the references so I make, mentioned Greener uh, um, Frameworks of Organizational Growth was published in Harvard Business Review back in 72. A number of people still reference that material is dated, but it's still relevant today. The Winston and Johnson model was published in Administrative Science Quarterly um, back in 89, uh, and it's still relevant uh, today as well. So finally, for me, so that's the end of the session. So I will encourage you when the next lectures we'll be looking at a uh, topic will be around organizational resilience. What we'll look at organizational resilience, how organizations can recover and bounce back from adversity. And uh, that obviously can um, help organizations to, to survive if they are able to bounce back, you know, flatten the cough. Remember flatten the cough. So that can help them to to bounce back so that's the, what we're going to look at in in the next lectures in in week four and finally don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel where i'll be posting relevant case commentaries and materials on there and if you haven't done so i'll just want to uh get you to do so because you are going to be uh missing quite a lot because i'll be i'll be posting some extra resources there that you could find useful provide additional insight into some of the some of the uh, questions that we have and also questions relating to your post assessment in this particular modules and even on that modules i'll be giving you some insight into how to achieve uh, a better result a better a better grade what examiners are looking for and how you can actually um, prepare uh, almost like uh, a distinction a distinction essays or a distinction report so i'll be doing all sort of series on on that as well so stay tuned and I'm going to see you in the next in the next uh, pre-record lectures, and uh, I will encourage you to get involved with your seminars and uh, engage with your personal uh, tutors as well to to get all the help that we can. So thank you so much, and I will see you again. So bye for now, and that's it for me. Um, I, I just want to leave you at this stage. So thank you so much, and bye.